Good morning. How are you? Can I get a mic check? This is Nate G on the mic. On the microphone. How are we doing this morning? Everyone good? Everyone good. Well, we're having a quite a rally here. Live and direct from the West Coast. It's still morning here. It's afternoon there for most of you, I'm assuming. Uh, I am Nate G, also known as uh, G Money and the better looking of the two Nates. So, um, of course, that's subjective, but um, that uh, I've been trading with, uh, with Nate Bear for... Uh, at least a decade and D man for nearly almost that long. Um, so I am, am well versed in both of their trading methodologies and I sort of, uh, am a blend of the two. Um, I started out using the TPS system. Um, and, uh, then I, and learned that from Nate and uh, Nate bear. And then, um, I started adding volume profile uh, to that same setup and a lot of other trades, uh, which I learned from from D Man, and which is really his. Oh, I don't know. I, you'd call it his primary edge, but he uses it across, and we use it across all edges. Um, so, I am going to do a training today on uh, volume profile and volume profile. I've got a trade on right now really quick, which I'll just, I'll cover quickly. Um, uh, this is uh, our sort of oversold RSI. We call these a sniper trade. Um, as you can see, I have the SPX up. I'm actually trading the SPY. Uh, well, I guess what here's what I'll do is I'll just switch it over real quick. Um, we're using an indicator called Ready Aim Fire at the bottom, which is something that you have to purchase. Um, so we usually try to uh, announce them in chat. Uh, we're waiting for an oversold condition or an overbought condition, like we have now. Obviously, in the in the spy, we've been running up, ripping shorts faces off, um, and we're looking for a, a rounding candle color change and a, uh, a down arrow on the ready aim fire and then we get confirmation because of a change in color on our histogram here um, on our TTM squeeze. So this was uh, this trade triggered right before I came on the mic. Uh, I bought puts in the spy. I have a very tight stop on this however uh, because we are in a rip your face off rally uh, or rip the face off the shorts. So I don't expect this rollover to be per m massive. Um, I expect it to probably come down and test that recent high and then keep going up because I, I feel like we're in a trend up day, um, if, if that makes any sense. And, and these trades, uh, you have to be careful with these trades uh, on a trend up or down day because the you're you're playing an oversold or an overbought position, and so those bounces or those rollovers tend to be a little bit shorter when it's a very trendy trendy day. Okay, so that's just really quickly a trade I'm in. So if you hear me pause or say, "Oh, uh, I'm taking profits," or "Oh, I got stopped out." You'll know, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. This is a trade we've been we've been taking in uh, Daily Profits Live, and uh, we're also sort of proof of concepting some of it, some some of the pieces out on it. Uh, but so far, it's been a pretty pretty lucrative uh, trade. So uh, trade setup, trade edge. So really quick before I get rolling, um, you've heard from Nate Bear uh, twice. You've heard from D Man. Um, and now you're going to hear from me, but put a, put a seven in chat. If you feel like you're drinking from a fire hose today and things are just, uh, coming at you full, full bear. <laughs> seven plus. Yeah. Sevens, tons of sevens. Um, for, for new, newer traders, um, this is a lot. 
It is a lot to swallow. It is a lot to take in. Um, you're, you're getting, you know, the equivalent of 30 to 40 years worth of trading knowledge um, just by us speaking, right? And so um, D-Man, uh, I, 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 he goes about 200 miles an, an hour with his hair flapping in the wind. Um, and that's just the way his brain works. And that's the way he trades. Um, Nate Bear is very, very good at explaining things. Um, and, you know, I, I liken that to, you know, he's going 90 on the freeway. Um, and then I like to try and come in and really, really slow it down. So, uh, and kind of get down into the basics and kind of answer some of those more basic questions. Um, and so I'm going to go over volume profile and I'm going to try and do it, uh, nice and easy and slow. Uh, so please let me know if you have questions because it's something we use, uh, quite a bit in here. So without further ado, let's start out. Uh, what is volume profile? Okay. Volume profile is a dynamic indicator that shows the relationship of volume traded to the price levels. Okay, so a traditional volume you see here on the left is at the lower end of your chart. And that tells you volume traded in relation to time because these candles are timed candles. We look at volume profile, which is on the side of your chart, which shows you volume traded in relation to price. Does anybody know, can anybody tell me why that would be beneficial to know volume traded in relation to price? What, what does that, what might that give you on a chart? Yep. Richard, nice job. 50, 50 DPL bucks for you. That's, that's a phrase we use in DPL. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Support and resistance levels. It lets you know where, um, you, you might find uh, bounces. You might find rejection levels. Um, you might, um, find some cons consolidation area, right? So during trading, we have accumulation and distribution phases, right? Um, where large market makers and institutions are accumulating uh, positions and then um, allowing the, the position to move or the stock to move and then um, distributing those back out into the, into the open. And they create these areas as you can see, called value areas. <laughs> Cappy, you would have you would have answered if you were giving out DPL bucks. Yeah, I know. Uh, but so we're we're creating value areas as we get get consolidation areas in trading, which some of these value areas are you know the TPS style trades as well. Um, that's where we get that consolidation area. So. What do those value areas create? Well, these are the types of patterns that, that, that we trade and that every trader should know how to recognize. Um, when we get into these value areas, they create ascending triangles, descending triangles, head and shoulders, inverted head and shoulders. Um, they're just patterns of consolidation before another move, right? So what is a value area? We, you know, the, the kind of the key areas we talk about in a value area is a value area high. You'll hear us say that a value area low. And then the one thing you'll hear us say the most is the POC, the point of control. And typically we just abbreviate it and we say we're coming into the POC here, right? So what does that look like on a chart? Well, here's what a value area looks like on a chart. And when, when I flip over to my charts and uh, Nate Bears and D-Man's, we have them all coming from the left hand side of our chart so it doesn't interfere with price. But what you'll see is this and this one, this example is coming from the right hand side. You'll see a value area high where this 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 value, this uh, VP node, as we call it, will have a value area high that will act as resistance, a point of control where most of the uh, the volume traded at that price is and a value area low. So you'll have support, resistance, and then your main point of control. We use that as an over under line. 
And so when they stack together on a chart, you get, you know, multiple uh, value areas that end up looking kind of like this. And then you get sometimes gaps between value areas. And we'll, we'll see what that looks like on an actual chart. So what does the VP look like on an actual chart? It looks like that when it's over to the right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you over to my actual live charts. And we can talk about what that looks like um, in real life. So this is a trading view chart. If you have trading view, the way you're going to add volume profile to your charts is you're going to go up to your indicators. You're going to search for VRVP or visible range volume profile. And you're going to place that on your charts. I'll give everybody a second to do that. If you're in trading view in thinkorswim, you go to your studies um, and then you look for uh, volume profile and you can put that on your charts. Thinkers and um, TC2000, I don't know how to put that on, but it's kind of the same way. So it's visible range volume profile. And then the adjustments that I make to that, it's over here on the right. The adjustments that I <clears throat> make to that are um, on inputs for VRVP. I change them to 200 instead of 50. Um, because I like a little bit more detail. You can go 150, you can go 100. Um, I think the base is pretty, is, is pretty, um, it doesn't give you enough information. And then under style, I change the width of my box to 30 and I put it on the left hand side of my chart. And then I just like to see all of it. So I change each one of these volume up and volume down to 30%. and I turn off value area high and value area low, but I do like to put point of control on the chart and I typically put it as a dotted line. Yeah, I still drill down if I have it set at 200. Okay, so then what you have on your chart is this volume, all this volume at price levels on the left-hand side of your chart. Okay, so in TradingView, you this is probably the most uh, in TradingView and TC two thousand. This indicator works uh, tremendously well in Thinkorswim and some of the other ones. It's a little clunky. I personally trade in Thinkorswim. I mean, sorry, I I do my trades in Thinkorswim, but I do all my charting on um, TradingView because it's way more robust and more, uh, much more flexible. Uh, and somebody just asked if I could show the settings for uh, VRVP again. Does anybody have any questions on how to get that onto your chart? Um, Roswell, I, I, I subscribe to the, the maximum, the, whatever that is, the pro plus or whatever. Uh, but I don't think you need that you, you do to get volume profile. You do need at least the, the first or second level, uh, payment. Yeah. The settings on think or swim gunner are a little bit different. That's correct. Um, and on Thinkorswim, if you want to put it to the left, uh, you have to put the expansion. There's a there's a setting for expansion, and you want to put that to the uh, no on expansion to no, and it'll move those things to your left. And so when we get into a chart here, here's the FDX chart on a five minute. 
Um, this was, uh, D-Man played this today. Uh, I was watching it. I did not play it today. I wish I had on an ICB daily, uh, which is an inside candle break. And, um, you can see here, we have our gap up, right? We have our gap up, uh, from earnings and you can see that this, this red line has acted as a support level um or kind of an over under support level ever since we gapped up here um, because the majority of traders are in this area right here so as we get above that right as we start to get above that and roll and come back down in we know there's plenty of traders that are going to be able to find support you're going to be able to find support here right there's plenty of volume in here that people are gonna buy back off of. They don't want it to get below that. Now, if it gets significantly below that, um, then you're you're kind of, you, you know, it's kind of a, now a bearish, potentially a bearish setup. So if we're looking at, let's look at a large, let's look at Netflix on a, a daily. And let me get rid of these drawings here. All right, I'm watching. Um, I'm also watching my spy setup. It it got to about ten percent on that small roll, and it's trying to move back up here. What's ha what's happening today? Do you guys do you guys know what's happening today and why why we're getting such a such a big run um, run up in the spy? Can anyone tell me why that's happening? Or, or care to hazard a guess? Yeah, I mean, it, it, end of the month, sure, end of the quarter, that's not what I'm looking for. There we go, 50, 50 DPL bucks to history guy. Uh, the shorts, shorts are having to stop out. Whether whether because the their their short is going against them or because they've realized we've we've put in a bottom here, um, shorts people that have been short the market. This is the this is the spy here, right? People that have been short the market from anywhere up in here, you know, have made their money and now they're having to get out of their position. And what do you have to do when you cover a short position? What do you have to do? When you cover a short position, you have to buy your stock back. That's correct, right? So buying the stock back plus uh, buying that's coming in from people that have been waiting is creating a nice little uh, short run today. And that, that's why I said when I was taking this, um, this uh, SPY RSI trade, uh, I was being really, really cautious because... Um, Shorts are just getting squeezed right now. So I'm being I'm being really, really cautious on that on that trade. So to get back to volume profile, you'll see these large, the larger nodes here and point of control levels. Let me make that just a hair smaller so it doesn't take up so much of the screen. These larger areas here, these are your point of controls in each of these value area nodes, right? These VP nodes. So this is on a daily chart. You know you're going to be able to find support and resistance here. There's another one down here. And because this is visible range volume profile, as you, the more you see of the chart, the more they'll change because they're giving you what what you're looking at that volume profile range. So you see, as I scroll through to here, let's go like this. If I were to go like this, oh, I, wanted, I wanted to cite a good example here. There you go. So you see right here, you have a point of control I'll make it yellow. 
right? You have a point of control there um, because we're seeing these traders right here, this volume profile. But as soon as that goes off my screen, that gets much smaller and almost goes away. You still have some from these traders here, but you are not, it, 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 it changes, you don't have as much. So that's what it means when we, we say that's a visible range volume profile. Sorry, I'm gonna catch up on chat. Um, Steve, I can cover that uh, another time. Uh, are you talking about the the this this one, this indicator, the squeeze indicator on the bottom of my chart? That's just uh, that's just the squeeze pro indicator. It's free on Trading View. So when we're looking for setups and resistance levels for volume profile, right? We are using um, just stopped out on my uh, spy trade. Market's just a little bit too strong today. So let's find a good example here of a trade or a setup that's going to give us levels to work off of. So let's find, okay, let's go to Google here. Okay, see, here, here's how we can kind of find some support and resistance levels. Uh, Google, this is a, this is a daily chart, uh, was rolling over here um, last week. Right, and it was coming down into levels. If we wanted to find a good level to trade Google off of, and this is what D-Man was doing, you see this, this volume profile level here, this node, right? We're coming into that node and we've started developing some of that node. But if you come in here and you put a line at the bottom on the value area low, I, I like to make that yellow, and then you come up to this level uh, here, value area high. And then you find your point of control, and I'm going to make that red. That's just sort of the mid area. Now I've got this volume profile area marked up. And now as I go in closer to the chart, and I see how that volume profile area changes just ever so slightly. My point of control is still in the same spot. I can maybe put another point of control level. Oh, I'm sorry about that. I always do that. You can ask anybody in the DPL room. I use my key commands and I hit the wrong one. So now you can see here we have, and you can see that it's come into this level a few times and rejected. This is a daily chart, right? Okay, we have uh, some resistance there. We have some resistance there. We're coming into today into some, some resistance here. And then from a support perspective, right? We've bounced off it here. We've pierced through and reclaimed here, but we've bounced off it here and we've bounced off it here closely, right? Not exact, but closely. So this is a daily chart, but if I'm looking for a setup, okay, let's say we're gonna look for this pullback and we wanna try and find a level to, to bounce Google off of. All right, so let's move down to a 15 minute chart. So those lines are now still on my chart, right? And you can see as we get above certain levels, so this upper yellow level was my value area high, right? You can see here on Tuesday, the 29th, we pierced up above it. We pierced right through that uh, um, resistance level. What is resistance? Uh, <laughs> thanks, D-Man. <laughs> what, what is your... 
What, what happens to resistance? What does resistance become when you get above it? Can anyone tell me? For some more DPL bucks. I'm handing out DPL bucks today, Nate. I hope that's all right. Right, right. It becomes support. Mish, did I pronounce that right? DPL bucks. Uh, so as you can see, right, it pierced up through here. It, it, it had a, a rallying kind of day, a couple days, but, but look what happens, right? You have this level on your chart from, we put this level on our chart way back, you know, let's, let's say, you know, 10 days ago or more, right? Or at the start of September, but now, you know, okay, I'm going to come into that level. Look, that's going to act as support right because it was previous resistance but now we've gapped down into this level and we're going to play within these point of control areas and we know because we put this level on our chart previously that this level of 127.57 is going to act as support and this is going to be a good example and we're going to see if this is going to happen google's ripping today right google's ripping today but what do you want to bet we find support and I'm going to kind of give us a range because every gap needs to be closed, right? So, uh, let, we find support somewhere, I, uh, resistance, sorry, somewhere between 133.30 and 133.60. Right? So this value area high that we're back inside and that we've honored this, this uh, support level, we're gonna start to see resistance in here. And the reason I give us those two ranges is because here's our gap close from Wednesday of last week, right? Wednesday to Thursday of last week. We are potentially gonna come up in here and either reject off the value area high or the, uh, the gap close, because all gaps need to be closed. It's just, it's a saying, it's not a real thing, but, but for the most part, they really do. And then as soon as, as soon as we got above this point of control and this is, um, let's get, let's drill down and let's drill down into a five minute, right? And let's also put on day session breaks okay so i know d-man is playing google today right so d-man if you want to chime in here um you see this this red line i'm going to make it bigger i'm going to make it bigger okay at 130.81 okay that on the larger on the when we see more of what the this chart is actually I'm going to move it down just a hair okay when we pierced up above that level this is an over under level and then we retraced back into 13086 I wasn't watching it at the time we got up and over that level and retraced back to it demon were you a buyer at that spot if you can hear me He was, right? So we got over this point of control level and retraced back into it, retested it, and then gone. And Demon, where's your where's your exit? I'm sure you've already taken some profits, but where, where's your where's your target? Am I close up here? That's what I thought. That's what I thought that was the trade you 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 took before you got off mic. And you see, we we're, we might come into some some resistance here. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's a strong. We're, we're having a strong ripper of a day, so it, it could just pause for half a second and go. But when under normal price action, you know, we're gonna see so we're gonna see some resistance up in here. Yeah, gap close. Okay. So, does anybody have any questions about how volume profile? Uh, can help inform you on support and resistance levels 
um, from larger time frame charts all the way down to you know one and five minute charts. Uh, Viper, a, a, a woodpecker setup is Nate's TPS trade. Looks like a woodpecker. He's going to cover that when he comes on after me. Right. So that that's that's Google. I mean, we can do this with with any chart, right? You can see this level was supported. Down here is the value area low. We'll make that on FTX. Whoops. Sorry about that. FTX was a value area low. Right. And we're coming up into support. Okay. I'm sorry, resistance. I always do that. This is support. This is resistance. I always say I'm backwards for, for whatever reason. Maybe I'm dyslexic. And that gives us our value area with a, a point of control on the low side. Yeah, Q it, uh, K who it, um, but, but again, you have to use, so using, we like to say using volume profile is an art and not a science because you have to combine it with what you're seeing on the chart um, as well. Right. So, for instance, let me put, you know, let me put my days back on here. Um, and yeah, it, it, Bucky or Buckeye, Buckeye, um, there are thousands of trades I've made based on VP. Um, al almost all of them are informed by, by VP. Right. So. You could have picked up FedEx if this is your, you know, let me get rid of, let me get rid of this. Here's our, here's our point of control level. This we're, we've now drilled down to a five minute chart, right? Here's our point of control level. As we spiked up yesterday and came down, right? That, that is a good buy area. This morning when we opened at that same area and ripped, let's see what it happens on a two, see if we came down into it a little bit. Okay, we opened right at it. But you know that's a good level to take a trade off of because it's already marked up on your charts and you were above it. And then you would have had this rip, right? When we talked about D-man's trade of letting of letting Google let's go to a one minute, right? Letting Google get above this one thirty seventy seventy three and come back into it for a buy before it goes. And look, what did I say? I I drew these I drew these lines on this chart before this price was here. Price was you know price was somewhere in here, right? when I started talking and started drawing these lines on the chart, right? That 133.26 line on Google was drawn there before that was, that was ever going to get there. And look, we got, we got within, what did I have? What do I have at 133.26? Got it within four cents, right? So that's not to say it's going to reject and come all the way down here, but this if if you were long Google knowing that this resistance spot is here within 4 cents, you know to be taking profits into that area. Yeah, I was 4 cents off, man. I suck. <laughs> I'm the worst. <laughs> But it is, but it is, it's a science, right? It, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an art form because there's so many VP levels in this chart, as you can see, and you can see where consolidation happens you know, you see there's a smaller point of control right here and which was also formed while all of this consolidation was happening here.
So this is a pretty powerful tool if you learn to use it uh, well and you take the time. So somebody give me a, a, a chart that they would like to at least start to mark up. Anyone have a, have a, have NVIDIA? Okay. Okay. I'm going to get rid of a couple of things on here. Hold on a minute. Okay. So if I have a, a blank chart, Oh, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to start by getting rid of all my drawings. Okay. I'm going to go to the daily and I'm going to start finding some levels. Okay. So do I care right now about these people? If I'm tra if I'm looking to train, Trade the chart right now. Do I care about those people? No, I don't care about those people. I care. I care about all of these people, right? And then we can start to get a little bit more specific at that point. So I'm going to come in here and start on a large scale. I'm going to get a little closer to this on a daily and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in that value area, low gap crusher. If you get below that, your face is ripped off and, and you're long. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in this high here and then I'm going to come in here and find. So now I can get wider on this so we can see a little bit. Whoops. Sorry. So we can see a little bit more detail, right? And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, okay, so these are the people I care about. Here's another little trick. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick anchored VWAP because we have a gap up and I'd like to see where the average of people are for the, since the NVIDIA gap up. So I'm going to pick that and I'm going to put it on this first candle. So as you can see today, we're coming up into that anchored VWAP from our gap up from earnings. So that's just going to be an important level for me to keep an eye on. Okay. That's like a daily VWAP, but it is what a four, five month, almost six month VWAP. And that's how you do an anchored VWAP for a multi time frame. Okay. So then I'm going to come in here. I'm going to watch my, oh, I got plenty of time. Okay. I was watching my time. So I didn't, I didn't go over here. So then I'm going to come in here and this is going to be a pretty major point of control. That's my dog. If you heard that, uh, I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to put that there and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to make any, any one of those point of controls. I'm going to make them red. Okay. So those levels and I'll read the levels to you if, if you, if you want me to do that, if that helps, obviously the top level is at that spike high. 502.28 and my bottom level is at that spike low off of uh, earnings, which is 365.99, 366, right? This main point of control I have marked at the moment at 235, 423.35. Sorry, I had to say that uh, slowly. <laughs> uh, and then um, I've put for the time being this uh, other uh, point of control in here at uh, 456.13. Okay. And now I'm going to start drilling down a little bit closer because we're looking to put a trade on in here. Right. And I'm going to get rid of these EMAs just because they're kind of clogging up the screen a little bit. Right. So then I like to go to, say, an hourly chart. Okay, now I can see a little bit more price movement. I don't need my session breaks just yet. That usually helps when I'm trying to figure out the days. 
Um, but as you can see, we're starting to come into this anchored VWAP, which, which should act as a little bit of uh, resistance, okay? So I am now checking to see is my, are my point of controls in the right spot? Well, this one here at 423.55 is exactly in the right spot. See, if I move it, it's at that, it's at that longest volume line, right? You can see right here. So that one was perfect. I didn't have to move it at all. Um, and then I'm going to come in a little bit more. I'm maybe going to slide this one up to those larger pieces there. And then you can see as I slide the chart and start to see more, those change a little bit. But I feel pretty good about that. Then I want to know this area above where we're at. So I'm going to put a line right there as a value area low for the people I think we're going to come up into in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to mark up the area we're in and then the area above it if I'm looking to go long. So I'm going to put a value area low there and I'm going to put a value area high there. And then I'm going to do the same for what the area that I feel we're in right now. So value area high and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go value area low. And so you see I'm using different colors so I can kind of tell the difference between this value area up here, yellow line to yellow line, and this value area here, yellow line to yellow line. And then I'm going to take a look on the chart and I'm going to see if I need to make any adjustments. So this lower line, I'm going to move down just a little bit because I'm seeing a little bit more support just a hair lower here. Okay, the value area high still feels good. This value area low, right? You'll see, right? You'll see here, it's acted as support when we've been above it. Support here, we pierced through but then reclaimed it right here and it started our gap up here. So I like where that level is. That feels pretty good. And then our value area high, we might need to revise that slightly, uh, but I'm not worried about that as much because we're, we're, not, we're not there, okay? So now the important people to me are here and where we're trading now. So I'm gonna start getting into more like a 10 minute chart. And you see how our value area high and our uh, anchored VWAP start to line up together. And if I zoom out just a little bit more, I'm actually going to bring that value area high down, down a little bit to, to, to hit this VP level here. So that should act as some uh, resistance as we get up into it, right? We're going to keep our volume profile, our, our point of control level here um, because that's part of the larger time frame. because you see had, had support there. So now I've got my ranges, right? We're above our point of control here, which is bullish. We need to get up and over this area here at 435.31 to, to, to start to move into the gap between these value areas and to get above this anchored VWAP. So this is going to help, help, us, help us with our support and resistance levels and knowing when we're up over certain key levels when it's bullish and if we get below that it starts to get bearish. Sorry, let me catch up on chat here for a minute. So then now I have levels on my NVIDIA chart for when I pop over 
you know, I, I look at my scanner and it says, oh, NVIDIA is, is running or NVIDIA is pulling. And I'm going to come over here and I've already got these things on my chart. So if I look at it on a 15 minute, I know where there are levels that are important to me. I know if we're coming into one of those levels and then I can zoom out and see uh, what that level actually means and um, what I want to do decision wise um, on this particular trade. So Nate just, is that Nate? Sorry, different trade. Um, so you see now it, we've respected this level in Google that we put in here uh, twice. So that is definitely a support level that was that was key to be put in, especially if you were long that trade. Yeah, I was just gonna say it looked like you were booking profits based on the on that level. I, I like it. Glad I could I could help. Todd, I put my anchored VWAP on the the gap up daily candle for Nvidia. So when I go out to a daily. I just attached it to this daily candle right here on May 25th. Nate, I'm kind of bummed our, uh, our sniper trade didn't, uh, I mean, it might play out here now, but, uh, it was super, super over, uh, overbought. Uh, Dave, I don't have the RAF on this screen. And yes, this is recorded. So this works on all charts across all levels. And you'll see uh, when we pull up charts, if I pull up a chart or, or Nate Bear pulls up a chart or D-Man pulls up a chart, there's lines all over the chart, right? And we have different colors that signify different lines um, and a lot of times we have to hide a bunch of those lines because it just makes the chart look really messy. But what it's, it, what it means is we've come into a chart earlier and, and started marking up levels so that when we, when we pull up a chart at a later date, like, f like for instance, let's just get rid of all these on Roku. This is a, uh, it's a good example, right? We're getting a little bit of a bounce here. And this is where a value area low. I mean, for really, let's be honest, this node is pretty, pretty massive, but I'm trying to I'm trying to draw it here. I mean, look at this node and it, and within it, it's got like one, two, three, four, five nodes within it, but that is a chunk. Uh, volume profile and you can see the ledge at which I kind of drew this see it, I mean that's a pretty hard ledge right there right and it just so happens and this is where this is where you know you could say oh, okay it's magic well it's also where previous spots have have rejected from you know so having these on your charts and then also understanding how to just mark up your charts and chart patterns is is key. Felix, I am using a uh, trading view. Does anybody have any questions here? I've uh, Nate's coming back on at one, and then D Man at two, uh, and then you'll get all three of us on the mic uh, at th from three to four. Um, so hang hang on for that. I'm, I'm sure there'll be some some banter uh, going going on in there. And you know the it, the interesting thing about trading is, uh, you know, 
I can come in and say, you know, I really like this Roku chart uh, for a bounce here today off of this 6750 level, you know, and um, Nate Bear can can jump in and say, you know, I think that's stupid. Um, I think it's a short and we can both take the trade we see uh, and both end up making money, um, maybe on slightly different time frames. Um, but but we, we kind of have no no um, no problem coming in and disagreeing with each other because that's what makes a market. Right. And and hearing two different uh, or even three different um, viewpoints on a trade setup or a trade idea is is invaluable to your, your learning process. Right. Um, because you can maybe maybe the way Nate B sees a trade, Nate Bear sees a trade, uh, resonates more with uh, how you see a trade, um, and then you can start to see and understand what he means. Maybe it resonates more than uh, D-Man or or me, right? So it's really helpful when we all three uh, get on there and. Uh, start to banter about trades. Um, and the master at VP by far is, is D-Man. This was, this was his original, um, edge. And, um, I, I just, uh, uh, have studied it and use it as well. So, Uh oh, D man's got jokes. <laughs> I know, I saw that one coming from a mile away. Oh god. <laughs> you know, D man, you you could just just come out and say uh, Nate G is stupid. Uh, that would probably get to the point a little quicker. Dad joke for the win. So do anybody have any questions here on VP or um, uh, Eric would like me to walk through adding an anchored view map? Yeah, that, I get that question a lot. So let me just do that really, really quick. If anybody has any questions to, uh, on VP specifically and how we use it. Okay, um, Eric, let's say we wanted to track the, well, it's not going to be a great, let's, let's go back and do it on... Uh, on Google. Okay, let's go to a 10 minute. Okay, let's say I wanted to track, hey, look at that level that rejected on Google there. Drawn well before it got there. 133.24, that's the, that's the power of VP right there. Okay, so let's say I want to draw from the gap down, I wanna know anchored VWAP, right? From this, from this gap down spot right, right here. I want to know where anchored VWAP is. I'm going to kind of zoom in to that candle, that first candle. You can do it on a daily or whenever. I'm going to go, it's one, well, not, not from the cross. One, two, three, four, down. I'm going to hit the little arrow. About midway down is anchored VWAP. I'm just going to click on it. And then I'm going to come over here to this candle. And I'm just going to click on that candle. And it's going to start it from that that morning gap down and it's going to give me the anchored VWAP all the way through today. I'm missing my short on spy. I'm bummed. I'm looking at my other monitor, just watching it happen. <laughs> uh, uh, I use uh, moving averages. I use the 21 and the 34 specific more specifically ticks are rolling I missed my trade it's all for the greater good though all for the greater good yes this is recorded um, we'll send out uh, how to get this recording um, because it'll be a little bit different um, than the than the Nate sessions, but uh, but we'll well the mods will send it out in uh, in an email. So, um, 
that is my time, I believe. Nate, any, any other questions before I jump off? Nate, Nate Bears coming back on the mic in about four minutes, T minus four minutes. So if you need to get some coffee or a snack or get your lunch in front of you, um, now's the time. Because then when D-Man comes on, you're going to be drinking through a fire hose. Um, D-Man, what edge are you going to do? Have you decided yet? Or are you going to do that one on the fly? Yeah, you're welcome, everyone. Sorry, it's, it's, it's hard to cover all the basics of, of VP in, in a short session. So I, I hope I covered enough of it. I feel like I missed a lot of it. So, Jeff Mack, you got that short for me? All right, man, thank you. Do I get 50% of those profits or are you just letting me know you took it? Is that a real thing now, the, the, the exclamation point in tube? That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Love that. All right, everyone, uh, I'm out. I'll be back for the uh, Three Amigos session at uh, and banter at three. I'll have to come up with something to get D-Man back. So I will talk to you all later. Have a great rest of the day.